Welcome back to Bottom Deck Achievements, a Hearthstone achievement hunting series. Folks, the announcement for the next Hearthstone set is probably just around the corner as I record this, and I want to take some time today to kind of uh, do a maybe a, a little bit of a Zeddy style video where I kind of look at how things have changed over time in this game, namely looking at uh, achievement sets new and old to kind of see have they gotten better, have they gotten worse, have they gotten uh, more difficult to complete, or all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, but first, uh, as it's been a couple weeks since I've recorded one of these, I have several achievements that I need to claim uh, for some good, good reward track experience. So let's get right into clicking on those. I have been absolutely grinding away at these, and maybe that gives the game away a little too early about some of the points I'm going to be making, but uh, it's been a bit of a difficult grind. Um, I've been doing a lot of these in a lot of different game modes uh, and have gotten a lot done. Uh, I would like to give shout outs to Wild for uh, both finishing the Topior achievement as well as making good progress on the Due Process one. Um, cards and All-Star, hey, and I'm almost done there. Um, Mill Druid is actually the deck I've been climbing with this month in Wild. It's been a lot of fun, it wins a lot, and the games are over pretty quickly. Uh, wild stuff. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, finished off the Hedge Maze achievement in duels, finally, still with the Elise builds. Um, not much else to say there, I think I've mentioned that a couple times. Uh, objection, I don't think I'm done with step two, but okay, I still have a little bit to go there. Should be an easy finish. I can also do that in Wild with uh, Secret Mage if I want, because that deck is also very good. Uh, moving on, step two, definitely not step three. I'm exactly halfway done with this grind with Paladin. That's a bit of a rough one, because that's not a great card. I'll figure it out, though. Uh, I mostly want to click on all these just to kind of see where I'm at. Um, Muffled Screams, the Kidnap one, uh, as well as Perjury, which I think I'm totally done with. Yes. Um, I've been playing a lot of Secret Reno. I actually have a duels run going right now that's uh, sitting at 11 wins with a secret Reno list, uh, where I actually got both the hilt and blade of Keldalar to make uh, the the full sword, and it's been it's been it's been carrying me. Uh, so I'm I'm one game one game away from 12 wins with Reno for the first time, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I've been playing since there's there's two achievements for Rogue and one technically two if you haven't finished Orion yet um, for Mage that deal with secrets. It's a perfect fit for Reno. Uh, so I've been doing that. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Um, not enjoying the Control of Shaman. I covered a couple weeks ago uh, as much. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of difficult to win games, actually. Uh, but I am still playing it every now and again because I, I got to get this Muck Pools one done and the, the Vosh one done as well. Um, and there's no real other evolution list that's really... Uh, doing much of anything right now. And then I think I'm done other than the neutrals, which I have quite a few here. Uh, step one of Sylvanas, been doing that a little bit here and there, dual standard, little mix of both. It's kind of just an easy card to throw in almost anywhere as long as you're playing any minions. Uh, finally finished Dispossessed Soul with uh, Quest Priest. Not much to say there. Uh, Dinner Performer was not a fun card to play. Um, it's, you know, this one and the creepy painting are the two, like, neutral ones that are currently feeling the worst to do. Uh, that and, I guess, the Stoneborn General, but yeah, that one has at least its end in sight. But, uh, yeah, not fun, that dinner performer. Uh, Afterlife Attendant had a, a couple more successful runs uh, with the, with the uh, Stellina list that I covered the other week. Um, had a bit of a better time with that. Uh, and then finally, finally finished the Sin Runner one for another good chunky 500.1. So with those 15, knowing that we have probably about a month left, we are uh, at 65%, which isn't great. We want to be right around 75% at this point, I think. So I have a little bit more pushing to do. Uh, but I think that's going to lead into the main thing I want to talk about today. Um, when you look at the sheer number on some of these cards... Um, and I, I kind of first started thinking about this when I was playing quite a bit of Hunter uh, with all the whole Wild Seed package and everything before the second nerf. Uh, I realized that as much as I was playing the deck, I was still nowhere close to finishing this achievement. Uh, I had been 
you know, playing the deck for pretty much all my standard games were this deck uh, for about a week, I want to say. And I, eh, maybe that's a lie, maybe it was less than a week, but still, I was playing it a good amount and felt like I was doing a good job summoning the Dormant Wild Seeds, but I was still so far away from finishing this one. And then when I look at some of the other ones, like 60 minions with Objection, you can only do this one at a time. You can only have one secret up at a time, one copy of Objection, that is. That's 60 times you have to play this card. Um, the you know this for being a mini set card once again you have to play it 50 times i guess unless you double up the battle cry with bran but even then it's a pure paladin card bran isn't a paladin card so it, it got, gets kind of tricky so i was i said all this to say i was going through this list and a lot of the numbers seem pretty high and so I, it got me wondering like what the developers kind of intended for people as far as uh, getting these achievements done, whether they expect people to not get all these done and just kind of do the ones for the, the stuff they want to play, or if, if they do expect people to get all these done, uh, why the numbers are so high that it's making it difficult for even someone like me who bases most of my uh, Hearthstone playtime on chasing achievements so dang difficult because i feel like i'm far behind where i usually am at this point uh in the set and uh, like i mean look at this sinstone graveyard like i haven't even finished step one of this one uh the shaman one the muck pools uh i'm not even halfway finished i've been playing a good amount of that control list um yes i'll finish this one this one seems a lot more reasonable 40 uh so doing this effect 40 times there's multiple ways to proc this uh, this muck pools one you have to first you have to find the card which yes in a standard list it's uh, two copies each uh, but then you know getting uh, there's a lot of games where I don't get three full procs off of the the location by the time I, I get to it and stuff plus I want to sometimes hold on to it for waiting for a Vosh or a Knoll or something like that so it you know it's it's not as easy as just doing that um, and like I said, I look through this list and I look through this list and I just see a whole lot of high numbers. So I wanted to go back and kind of look at some of the older lists to kind of see, you know, how that's changed. Um, so especially because this is the, uh, this mark, this, this set marks the, um, the second full year of achievement sets that we've gotten. Uh, the first one was Dark Moon Fair, which was the third set of whatever, the standard year was two years ago uh don't quite remember but at this point griffin hold up no the one before griffin whatever it was um i'm i'm bad at these they don't matter anyway um but i look through this one and uh i guess another another thing and i've mentioned this before is that a lot of the ones in the new set name specific cards and we'll get to this eventually but uh a lot of the other achievements in some of the sets uh fairly recently didn't do that there were multiple ways to get these done uh, not necessarily playing the cards from this set this one names one two three and then you know a specific cycle of cards from the set as well so they might as well have once again names the card names the card names the card names the card uh, and, you know, cycle of cards here, names the card, names the card, names the card. And you see this is a trend that has um, really picked up recently. And yes, I said all that to say this, in the Dark Moon Fair one, you kind of see the same thing. Names the card, names the card, names the card, names the card. And it's kind of like this throughout the whole thing. So you say, okay, maybe throw this one out. This was the first set that they did achievements. You know, maybe they were just trying to figure out what to do. But how do the numbers look? Well... Another thing that they stopped kind of doing is uh, there were a lot of achievements in some of the earlier sets that could be done in a single game or one turn. You know, this redeemed pariah one with 10 attack, destroying five minions in a single turn with thrown glaive. Uh, yes, there were grinds as well, the Ilganoth one, the Illidari studies one, and uh, you find a good little mix here. Uh, overall, I think the Greybows one might have been one of the most uh, egregious ones just for the set. Granted, I'm well above that now i've played with that card a lot since then mostly in duels but um here there was a good mix of grinds and single game kind of stuff but when we move to the next one the uh barons set uh i started to notice a couple things there were a lot more achievements that just like i said have multiple ways to get them done 
Cast five druid spells in a sing cast five druid nature spells in a single turn 25 times. You can do that anywhere with any nature spells. Literally just rig your deck up with deck up with whatever you want. Granted, I think they had um what was this, Lady Anacondra that made your nature spells cost less or something like that. So you were, you know, encouraged to cast multiple spells in a turn. But you didn't have to. You could do it with whatever you wanted. Uh, same with this one. I did it with Giants in Wilds because I didn't have Celestial Alignment. Didn't want to craft it. It would have been fine because it's gotten nerfed since then. But uh, uh, just the fact remains, you could have done this with, um, with really any setup you wanted, provided you could sort it out on your own. Um, and yes, of course, there are cards that are named uh, Sunscale Raptor, Tavish Stormpike, um, but like I said also, a good mix of stuff. Destroying minions with poisonous beasts and weapons. I think this one was only in here because there was, uh, they, they added a poisonous weapon to the mini set, uh, as well as like a spell that just gives a beast poisonous. But there were lots of other things you could do with it. Um, stuff in Wild. Uh, I think there is just a neutral in this set that could do it. Uh, it was a super easy one. And as you can see, just without even grinding for it, 545. Granted, we're almost two years past this, but, you know, there it goes. And then you look at, like, the mage one. Freezing characters with elementals, destroying frozen minions. Like, these are, like, easy ones to do. Not even necessarily with the cards from this set. Yes, some cards from the set help. But there's a lot of like flexibility here and like i said a, a good mix of things to be done in a single turn or a single game versus grinds um, and it kind of remains the same through stormwind as well uh, but it was in all track valley that i started to kind of notice that um oops if it'll load there we go um i started to notice in all track valley it kind of started to get to the point where uh, it just kind of centered around uh, naming specific cards from the set and no real build around conditions. And why is that? Um, maybe because uh, some of the earlier stuff was more kind of generalized. Like in Darkmoon Fair, there was one for just giving Silverhand recruits uh, divine shields. There was one for just popping divine shields on minions. Over time, more of those basic ones kind of get used up. Uh, now I could see if they wanted to do something similar in the current set, like give x silver hand recruits divine shields with buffet biggin because that is a card that does that uh when you meet a certain condition so um what i wanted to do is kind of come up with a kind of a metric for how easy or hard it is to get these achievements done and i had to go all the way to altrak valley um the stormwind and baron sets didn't really work for this because there were you know, like I said, a lot of things that could be done in one turn or a single game. Uh, the grinds weren't that bad. It was in Eltrak Valley that I kind of started to notice the grinds uh, getting pretty big. And yes, there were one-offs. There were ones that were harder than others, like the uh, the pet collector one, having to play it 151 times. Not great. Didn't feel good. Uh, triggering secrets. Well, that's a pretty open-ended one, but still, it's a big number. Uh, so I kind of started to look at the achievement lists and kind of remember how I felt completing them and kind of see if I could figure out like a difficulty metric and it needs tweaking of course but I wanted to start with the base of how many cards did you have to play and I did this by you know uh looking at the achievements like pet collector for example you essentially had to play this card 151 times so 151 um Iceblood Tower, uh, I, I did best case scenario for a lot of these, assuming that Iceblood Tower would always hit 10 mana spells. You still have to play it like 15 times, but in reality, the average is probably like, you know, six, seven, if you're building like a higher cost deck. But even then, Iceblood Tower was a bad card. Plus, this costs 10 mana anyway to play. It's not a cheap card in itself. You're not even guaranteed to get that far in the game. Um, but I did my best to kind of, um, you know, this one, yes, 75 times, but, uh, if your opponent has a full board, that'll give eight plus one plus ones, basically. So I kind of gave the benefit of the doubt and gave the best case scenario, or if I specifically remember a certain card, like, uh, um, kind of give kind of an average kind of thing. So I kind of tallied up between all the classes and the neutrals, how many 
cards you had to play for all the grind, just all the grinds, not the single game kind of stuff. Uh, Cause that, you know, could be completed in one game, could be completed in five, it's hard to say. But if we're assuming the best, we assume that you've played like a card like this, that you played it one time, did the achievement and it's done with. Uh, so I did this for the last three sets, Altrak Valley, Sunken City, and now Castle Nathria. So just even before I went into the data, I was kind of thinking, and I thought, Altrak Valley was a bit rough. Sunken City felt easier. I remembered that it was slightly easier to get the full uh, completion of those uh, just from personal anecdotal experience of I did them. And Nathria is just straight up feeling like a grind at this point. Um, the reason I'm doing this instead of just gameplay stuff is, is it's kind of difficult when it's just play this card in a certain way or X number of times because it's like I enjoy the more creative build around kind of ones and after you do the few that are in here you're just left with like okay well here's a here's a standard list and I guess try to make it good for ladder by throwing this card in there and I don't necessarily want to do that I want the creative like puzzle solving ones like I still to this day my favorite one was the spammy arcanist one that I did with hand buff paladin in wild with dragon egg getting it above like 14 health and just playing that in a spammy arcanist to just set it off to just pop off until it hits its limit that was so much fun to me and that still i think is my highlight of this series and that was you know almost a year ago in altrak valley uh so anyway with that in mind uh sort of ranking these um nathria as the hardest right now then altrak valley and then uh sunken city what do the numbers say well i have sticky notes here where i uh, wrote everything down and tallying up everything uh, just as far as like battle cries, having to play individual cards like secrets or whatever, uh, I came up with a total of a rough estimate total of 1,127 specific cards that needed to be played. Now, granted, a lot of these are neutrals; they can go into class ones. You're not playing a thousand games to get these done. You're trying to do multiple ones if you're someone like me who's trying to get all these done. So, 1,127 for All Track Valley. Now, keeping in mind, in my brain, I had already thought Sunken City was easier. We see that the number's lower by about 50, but still, that's a good little good little chunk less at 1,076. So how does Nathria compare? Well, unfortunately, Nathria is higher than both of them at 1,361. So we are uh, about 130 uh, played cards higher in Nathria compared to the other hardest achievement set to complete. So we're noticing, at least with Nathria, we're noticing a trend of you need to play these cards, you need to play more of them, and there's more of them that you need to play, if that makes sense. So in my opinion, this is a harder, less good, I would say, achievement set overall. And I don't know if this is gonna count as like my uh, set wrap up, because there's a couple other things I might wanna do. Uh, here and there here, but it's like I said, it's been difficult and it's been kind of difficult to find motivation to do these too Because especially with just what I have left. I don't want to play an all fell breaks loose deck I don't want to have to craft a Crixis just to get this done I want to grind out duels until I'm offered this guy again and then hope I can actually find him in my draws um, If anything, I'll see about recording my last uh, Reno game to see if I can uh, hit the 12 wins but that would more be more so to hit the 12 win achievement than any of the secret stuff. Yes, you'd see some secret stuff thrown in there, but that's where I'm at right now. And it, it kind of sucks because I started this series as wanting to uh, be the achievements guy to kind of like put guides out and stuff. But when the guides are just put this card in your deck and play it, it doesn't feel that great. So I'm still plugging away at these. I'm still very excited for what comes next. But uh, it's, I'm just really hoping we see like better quality achievements. I'm really curious as to how the achievements get made and who makes up the numbers. I, I kind of wanted to like ping somebody from the team to see if they sit down and talk with me. Maybe I will do that actually. But uh, as of right now, this is where things stand. Um, still got a lot of work to do for this set and I'm really hoping to finish up. But hopefully me getting a lot of this out there and just kind of talking about it in a video helps. So uh, that's, I've been talking for how long now? Jeez, like 20 minutes, that's, that's kind of rough. But uh, that's about the average length for these. Probably won't have to do too much editing. Uh, but anyway, that is going to do it for me this time. Um, 
yeah, normally I say like leave what achievements you'd like to see covered in the comments below, but I don't really know if there's anything else really worth covering from this set. Uh, if I think of anything cool to do with gameplay stuff, I'll see about recording that and putting it up as well, but uh, I might just see in the next set, um, which kind of sucks to say, but it's difficult to keep a weekly series up when it's just, like I said, the guide is just put this card in your deck and play it. Oh well, that's where it is. Uh, but hey, if you've watched this and uh, stuck with me this far, thank you so, so much. Uh, if you want to see me branch out to other kinds of Hearthstone stuff, let me know that in a comment. Uh, I'd sure love to give other stuff a try, maybe chasing some uh, Battlegrounds achievements with uh, some of the heroes. I'm terrible at Battlegrounds, by the way. Just, and I'm sure no one will, but just don't say mercenaries. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Twitch if you haven't done so already. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, check out some of my reaction content. Uh, I've been putting up, uh, I've finished up season one of Hell of a Boss and I'm going through Over the Garden Wall. I'm actually recording this while an episode is rendering right now. Um, let's go check those out if you like animation stuff. I'm pretty proud of those and I'm enjoying making them. So uh, do that if you, hey, it, you might be watching this because you watch that other stuff. But uh, either way, if you made it this far, thank you. Uh, leave a comment telling me that you made it this far uh, but anyway uh i think i said all i need to say um thank you so much for watching and i guess as always may the card you need the most never be at the bottom of your deck i think i totally botched that outro but whatever see you later